Last night I slapped together a portable power bank here that's solar powered uh, and with the intention of powering my well pump. So I live in the country, so I use a well pump for my water. So when the power goes out, uh, that's one of the things that I don't have is water, uh, water pressure. And also uh, the water pressure goes down, potentially making it to where I can't have to reprime the pump, that kind of thing. Uh, so uh, this is the, has the ability to at least temporarily plug in my well pump uh, with a thousand watt inverter and at least keep the pressure uh, maintained within the well pump. And it's portable. See, part of it is I wanted something that I can have a small footprint on the floor. So it takes up less floor space. I can put in a closet, storage room, that kind of thing. Uh, and then I can kind of wheel it around and put it where I want. Also, having the ability to have a solar panel already attached and also add more solar panels once it's in place if I need to. Two 12-volt batteries. And then there's the power inverter, which is a Renogy 1000. Everything is fused. There's a fuses everywhere. There's also a temperature sensor. There's the charge controller. Now this is a cheapo charge controller. You can get better ones. This is a Renogy charge controller. And this is all mounted just to a wood backing. And then attached to the hand truck here. There is an on and off switch. One of those marine grade on and off switches. There's the power inverter, batteries, and right here is where you connect the solar panel and it is fused. And also you can attach more uh, using a splitter. And the solar panel, just standing up here, depending on the angle of the sun, you could potentially use it uh, like this, or you can lay it down and get a better angle on the sun as well. You can also tilt the hand truck to get any angle you want. Okay, so I got the solar panel out of the way. Uh, I still have it hooked up just so you can see how it works. Uh, but it covers everything up so you can't see it. So right now, start here, the batteries here at the bottom. So these are two, uh, I think they're 13 amp hour uh, batteries. And I'm gonna have a link in the description with all these parts that I used. Uh, and then we went with a, I think it's a two gauge wire here. So the wire right here has to be split. Since we're not running these in a series, we're running them parallel, I basically take both of these and put them together here with a switch. Uh, so have it turned on. Uh, so both positives are fused. So you can see there's a fuse there on both of the positives, which I'll have a link so you can see what it is. And then goes to the switch here. And then I have a larger cable wire I think it's a 3-0. I went a little bit overboard with some of the wires, but uh, and that can goes over to the inverter, and that's for the positive. And then the negative, same thing. We just have a, a negative here and here, and then just go together and gather together here on the inverter uh, post. Now I go from the inverter post up to the charge controller through a fuse here, and then. You can see the charge controllers there. Uh, it also has a temperature sensor, which I ran, kind of caught up the wires here, and I ran them behind the inverter down, and I placed it between the batteries. You can see the cable right here goes in between those batteries right there to keep the temperature, um, so it gets an accurate temperature of what's going on around the batteries. Okay, so this is a cheap charge controller. These are like 30 bucks. Uh, you can get a much better one than this. It gives you more information. Uh, but this is where you can see the, that it's charging, where it says PV's flashing, uh, the battery's connected, and then we have uh, a gel battery. So we can select that. Uh, and then it shows where the connection is. Very simple. Now it has the temperature sensor, but it also has, uh, there to the right, you can have a Bluetooth sensor uh, Bluetooth uh, controller there so that way you can keep an eye on it uh, the, all the systems on your phone it's not super accurate but it does give you a general idea of what's going on uh, now I also glued this here so we can see since I don't have any kind of um, you know screen on the charge controller I have to use a voltmeter to kind of get a status of the uh, the battery percentage so this isn't like a hundred percent but it gives you a general idea uh, right there and with these type of batteries you don't want to go below 
uh, 40 or 50 percent, something like that. For demonstration, I used a shop vac, which gives me about 900, a little bit over 900 watts of continuous draw on the system. And it was able to power up fine and maintain, you know, the 900 watts, no problem. Uh, like I said, I was using my original intention for this system is to for my well pump. And the well pump, according to my calculations or my uh, testing, it's about 750 at max watts uh, while it's running. Now, well pump doesn't run all the time. It's turned on and off throughout the day. Having a 100 watt panel is not enough to power the well it by itself. But considering that I can add up to four panels to this system very quickly uh, once I get it in place. Also, uh, the well pump doesn't run all the time. So as you wash your hands or flush the toilet, that kind of thing, it'll turn on for a few seconds and then turn back off. So most of the time it's just sitting there not being run. And so the panel is able to catch up a little bit while it's not being run. So catch up on charging the batteries. And then once it's, the well pump is turned on, Hopefully the batteries will have enough charge to power it. And so this is more like a temporary, you know, gap type system. This isn't like a continuous use for days, that kind of thing. Uh, so this will be like it powers out for a few hours. Uh, I can maintain pressure on the well pump and I can use it a little bit. And it gives me a little bit of leeway there that I can just quickly wheel over there. I don't have to have a, a gasoline in generator to start up and all that stuff. I can just wheel this over there, plug it in and I instantly have water. Uh, so that's what the intention for me anyways to building this. But you might have different ideas. Um, also, different ways of building it may be better. Different components that might be better. Um, also, I was thinking that uh, if you want me to do a video on this, let me know, uh, of a wagon. So you have like one of those yard wagons and you can put a larger battery, you can put more panels, and it's very portable, but it's not something you can easily put in your house and put in a closet. Uh, so this particular one has a small footprint and you can easily, you know, wheel it right in the house, put it in a closet, in a storage room, in a garage, that kind of thing, and uh, be ready to go for future use. Also, if you know a storm's coming, something like that, uh, then you can go ahead and top off the battery, make sure it's fully charged uh, before you have a higher poten potential for higher uh, yeah, potential for using it so you can have it fully charged ready to go so anyways thank you for watching if you have any questions comments i'll have a list of all the the products uh, that you can buy and build this in the description so you can see what i did and if you have any suggestions or anything you leave it in the comments thank you for watching i'll see you next time